The Silver Screen Project. Welcome to The Silver Screen Project, where we look back at a series of films in anticipation of an exciting new cinema release. In preparation for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, we went back and watched 2018 Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It was good fun. What did you think of it? It was great, yeah. I realised that I have only seen this maybe one and a half times. Really? Yeah, we saw it in the cinema. Maybe I saw it twice in the cinema, but I, I saw it in the cinema... And I've half watched it since then, like once on when I rented it on Prime or something like that. I've right. never watched it since it's been on Disney Plus. And I really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, the visuals are fantastic. It's one of the things that yeah. that people go on about. And we can talk about it a bit more in detail. But I just think some of the some of the script writing choices, some of the storytelling in it is just it feels very fresh and original. It it, it takes certain elements that you might be expecting, flips them on their head. Just the comedy is just great. It's one of the funniest films like of the last few years, for sure. Um, anything else that you want to say? Yeah, no, I was, I was going to say, I, I think I've probably, I've probably seen this probably the third or fourth time. So still not loads, but yeah, yeah it's just really good. Like mm. I kind of forgot. So I remember at the time when it came out, it was like, oh my God, this is unbelievably good. And I thought, you know, that kind of wane over the years. But yeah, when I watched it, I was like, God, this is really good. And like, I remember, obviously, like you said, the visuals mm. being great and like the story beats, but like it's funny. Like mm. I remember, like um, Peter Porker and like yeah, yeah. Spider Man Noir being funny, but like even aside from like the novelty characters, it's still funny. It's also emotional. That's, yeah, yeah. Like I could put yeah. like Peter Parker's death, Peter. B. Parker. No, original. It is Peter yeah, Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, getting it mixed up. Well, like, kind of original. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. His death and like the funeral and stuff is genuinely like emotional yeah. and like hard hitting. It's like, fuck, there's yeah. There's that and there's all the stuff with Miles' family as well. Like it really, it, it does the comedy as well as the tragedy almost. Yeah, I suppose exactly. that's uh, just as important. But yeah, I mean, we've got lots to, to get get into there i mean like what like going into this i know initially there was there was lots of hype but there was also quite a lot of kind of apprehension because it was a sony spider-man film yeah i don't know would they have done homecoming at this point maybe they would have i done. think homecoming was before because we see homecoming, there's a couple yes, of shots that yeah, reference yeah. it and yes stuff. that's right yeah there's the thing yeah so homecoming but animated films i think the last film they'd done before this was like a moji movie or something yeah and like they weren't on a great track record but then they had phil lord and chris miller who had a medium i mean they had a great track record they did like i've got them written down here they did cloudy the charts and meatballs one and two jump street one and two and lego movie was pretty much right before this yeah so like there's pretty good yeah and they they really deliver on the highs of all those films i think it, it may even be better than any of those i think lego movie is probably up there lego movie is up there that was great but yeah this is i mean and yeah. jump street films jump streets are good but the, just the scale and the and the kind of creativity yeah. of these animated this, ones it seems it seemed fresh and obviously you get quite a lot of like comic animated films that go mm. like straight to stream or something lots but, like, of dc ones that, lots uh, of dc ones but they, they don't do much like visually they don't barely do anything yeah but like this, I think because it because it was like a big cinema release, it was it was a big deal when this mm. came out, and like it was just like everyone was talking about. Everyone, everyone was like, yeah, "Oh my yeah. god!" I think particularly mm. in an era we were ten years into the MCU by this point, yeah, yeah. the DC EU had kind of come and was already on its way out. <laughs> yeah, and like the the X Men films had come to an end. Like we yeah. were f- fully into like almost the start of. Yeah, superhero fatigue for like some people. Like oversaturated, yeah. And this yeah, came in, yeah. and it wasn't in any of those universes, and people no. were like, yeah, this is great. Like, And it's one of the things as well that's really like surprising that they managed to pull off is that this is, in a lot of ways, the start of like a franchise of a series. It doesn't yeah. like, it doesn't feel like, you know, like, oh, we're setting up, like, here's the team and everything. But they do effectively like recruit a team yeah, throughout exactly this. and none of the characters were known you know to the audience going into it i mean if you read the comics or whatever you're familiar with certain iterations of them yeah but even like the miles morales version they do is is you know it's it's unique and it has its own things and they deliver on like the miles morales stuff really well like the first yeah more than half of this film is pretty much all about him 
and then it's kind of bringing in the other elements. Yeah. It's, it's just it's just such a tightly written like script. It's so clearly well planned out with animated films. Obviously, there's an element of extra planning that has to go into yeah. certain things, but it just it just all flows really I well. Think what worked really well for it as well is like it is kind of an emotional film, but like. I think partly because it's animated, they didn't hold back on like making it wacky. I mentioned mm. Spider-Man Noir and Peter Porker. Yeah. Like they were brave enough to be like, actually, we can make this really silly if yeah. we want. Like, and they're in their own like distinct styles as well, as well as the uh, is it Penny Parker, the one with the yeah. spider robot, yeah, Spider or whatever. Yeah, just they're they're all really good. There's just they introduce them really like like I say really snappily, gets it all out of the way. That little motif of the comic book and the here we're gonna go do it one more yeah, time. It, it just it's great. Really it effective. works. It works really well. Particularly because that's the opening scene, isn't it? It's Peter yeah. Parker doing that, and it's kind of references a load of the other yes, films, but yeah. also it's like we don't need to do this again. Exactly. So we, it's kind of we all know the story. If you recognise any of those shots, so there's stuff like you say from Homecoming. There's the there's a reference to the ferry splitting yeah. thing. And there's some uh, Spider-Man there's, 2 stuff, I think. There's Spider-Man 3 with him dancing down yes. the street. And there's the, him dodging the thing in the cafe with Doc Ock. So yeah, yeah. If, if you recognised any of them, you're kind of going like subtly like, oh, it's just Spider-Man. It's just generic yeah. Spider-Man. It's all of them together. Yeah, it puts you in a really good place. And then the thing about the storytelling, the fact that you mentioned that, um, that they then, within about, what, half an hour, that Spider-Man that we think is going to be the guy going through, the yeah. guy who's agreed to like, like really optimistically mental Miles Morales is then killed off within five yeah. minutes of that. That seems fantastic because he's 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 on the back foot of Spider-Man often is, but it's quite a positive scene and it just kind of changes when yeah. the explosion happens and he's left and you're like, it's, it's, it's really almost, I mean, we've had, aside from this, like eight Spider-Man films in the last 20 years. Right, yeah, yeah. And it's like in almost every single one of them, it's they get to a point where Spider-Man's yeah. Got beaten up. Which is he looks they like even he's saying this, like in that opening thing, he's like, always get back up. And, yeah, 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 and yeah. like it's always because it, he's, he's a teenager, he's always getting beaten up and he comes back. And in this, he just didn't. And it's no. like, fuck, yeah. yeah. And it's like, because it's not Peter's story, it's no. Miles's story. No. Uh, whilst whilst it'll still being able to have like an older Peter Parker come in and, yeah, yeah. and do kind of that mental stuff, but a different kind of take on the it's character. It's just like, yeah, that bit it just really it really kind of resonated how effective that was for me like with me this time I was kind of just like damn like I remember it being sad I remember that whole funeral sequence and yeah. he like sneaks out and he's talking before he talks to his dad he's like do you really hate Spider-Man kind of thing it's all just yeah it's just there's I'm only pretty much gonna say good things about this oh <laughs> yeah. Probably tell. yeah I've got like one minor kind of gripe oh, I but... don't have um, another thing to- talking about the characters in there I think we get a lot of uh, classic Spider-Man villains in this mm. with a load of like weird redesigns that look amazing. You've got yeah, yeah. the the kind of the weird comic book kingpin who's just like yes, huge yeah. and like a square. Just the big square. Which yeah. is great. But then it's like so things like Green Goblin being like a huge yeah. like horrible goblin. It, which is kind of like because uh, so I was thinking about this because none of it's really directly from anything but Miles Morales Spider-Man is from the Ultimate Universe. So yeah. They rebooted it in 2000, had the whole Peter Parker thing again. Then he dies and um, Miles Morales takes over, which is kind of what they're doing with this. And in that universe, Green Goblin is like a big guy, but he's yeah. not even, I don't think he's quite, as, he doesn't have wings and stuff. So yeah. he's like its own, and, it, and he, Blonde Spider-Man as well, it's like its own yeah, thing. So it's, and, yeah, and yeah, Green Goblin's like, what, 30 foot or something in this? Yeah, like, it's like, ridiculous. like, I don't even know how to, yeah. And he's it's got like wings, a and he's got like thing. a little hat still, and then he's yeah. throwing pumpkin. We, we, I would have loved to see more of him. That's kind of my gripe, which I'll get yeah. to. There's certain um, little... And also, like you have Scorpion, who's yeah. another. He's like a Latino one, and he speaks only in Spanish with subtitles. Yeah, so but then really also cool. he's bigger and kind of has yeah. like he has like the six legs at one I point. Think he and... might have like a claw arm instead of a. Yeah, yeah. and it's like yeah, they look really yeah. cool. They're and great then redesigns. Um, uh, is it Olivia Octavius? Yeah, Olivia Liv, Octa- Liv, yeah. Liv Octavius. Yeah, and I like because uh, obviously making her a woman to yeah. a- add on to the element of surprise when she's mm. revealed, but also the the arms being like yeah. they seem more like like they're tubes. like inflatable almost, like yeah, as, if the air's contro- like pneumatic kind of thing. Yeah, rather yeah. than like Which robotic. Is, yeah. And I was like, it's that, a cool that, design. That whole scene as well. There's so many. Um, 
I was watching a video. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but if you search up like Spider Verse something something, <laughs> I'll see if I can find it. But this guy talks about the use of reversal in the film, and there's lots of subverting ex- expectations. So she's introduced. She's actually in the school on the display. Yeah, and you and, and the he, teacher stands in front of the surname. Yeah, because it's like Doctor Olivia, yeah. and you can't. See and the she rest, introduces yeah. the idea of the multiverse in that presentation, which is quite yeah. fun. And then he says later on, "I learned it in school." Anyway, yeah. Then she comes in, and it's all very kind of jokey, and she's talking about. Uh, Peter B. Barker being a bit like bigger than she expected, dimensional yeah. warping and that. And it's like, it leads up to the bit where she's like, I can't wait to see you like destroy yourself. And then it's like, Droop. yeah. And then it just like, it, it's the, just lovely the little reveals. It's like one that. of those that on the second watch, you kind of, you see all the hints that she is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, even her glasses are octagonal. I saw a thing well, saying yeah. everything in her office is, it? is yeah, like yeah. octagonal, yeah, yeah. Or not like everything, but like as much as they possibly could fit. She's in. really, I think it's, is it uh, Christine Han, is it? She was um, um, someone, yeah. Agatha all along. Yes, quite possibly. Uh, you can't remember the top of my head. <laughs> I've just but... written Christine Hans. <laughs> Catherine Han. Catherine Han. Catherine, Catherine Han. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's very good. And obviously, and... It's Nicolas Cage is yes, fun yeah. one more. But with the villains, there's Tombstone, which we kind of see. Yeah. Who... And who else? I mean, there's Prowler, obviously, which we could talk yeah. about. So is there another one? I don't think they have a full. I think that's it. I mean, Tombstone's kind of a bit generic. Yeah, I think it's hit. just the one that's. But, you know, just... we don't. Have we ever seen Tombstone in a live action film? So I don't thi- oh, it's, it's not live action. Uh, yeah, I know, but it's <laughs> yeah, nice yeah. to see him. Yeah, in, in yeah. Something. I mean, the only Tombstone I can think of is the one from the Spider Man animated series yeah. from you know from the nineties. Uh, I mean, no, probably there's probably some of the newer series probably have them on TV, but never in like a, in a bigger thing. Yeah, but yeah. Prowler, if we want to talk about that, yeah, is another thing where it's. It's it, it's if if I think he's quite integral to Miles's story. I can't really remember how the initial thing is. You played the game, right? I yeah. haven't played much of the game, but I know the Prowler's in it, and we're introduced to Aaron, so it's kind of like yeah, I can see where that's kind of going there. Um, I think they do it really well in this. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, I, was, I was trying to remember how it plays out in the game. I haven't played it for ages, but yeah, I think it's it's really well done in this because you get introduced to Aaron like early mm. on as kind of a fun uncle, as opposed yeah. to his kind of. Even, and yeah, exactly. It's a nice kind of antithesis. And they do the, the the spray painting and stuff. And he's like encouraging his interest. And like and he stuff. he's great. And then you've also seen the prowler at this point be like oh, terrifying and that, like the sound and that st- mu- that music motif is it it's like the Winter Soldier's cool theme, but like yeah. turned up to eleven. Like it's and so then, loud, it's like distorted and stuff. Yeah, scary. and then the That's reveal great. is genuinely like jaw dropping. Yeah, like, I was oh, gonna say, fuck. did you did you remember when you first saw it? Did you know that was coming? I don't think so. I think there's probably hints looking back because he talks about knowing the the secret tunnel from an engineering job. Yeah, and I think the dad says like, "Oh, he's not a good guy." So there's like little hints, but I I don't think think it's pretty. I think it was one of those that when I watched it, I was kind of so caught up in the film it hadn't even came to me, and I was genuinely like, I can't remember if I knew (laughs) going in or I I don't think I would have figured it out because it is it is nicely and yeah, so it's that thing. It's like. It's Miles' hero in a lot of ways, then yeah. becomes the villain. And the fact that Miles, um, Aaron doesn't realize that it's Miles until, you know, way further in adds yeah. that extra. He's getting t- chased by his uncle down the fucking He's like street. trying to kill him. It's really cool. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. It's it, just really it's, fun. It's, yeah. It's, it's really well done. Um, I think another thing uh, that this film does really well, probably better than any Spider Man, well, definitely better than any other Spider Man, <laughs> is the soundtrack. Yes. It's just, yes, it's yes. just great. Like it's you don't often it's not like it's only really like things like Guardians you get like a mm. proper soundtrack for a comic yeah, film yeah. but it's, it's so central to Miles as a character he's always got his headphones in yeah and like and it's not like a Guardians like often these sort of soundtracks kind of like big classic rock songs yeah. it's like actually it's it's a black kid in New York who's, yeah. who's listening to like and a rap lot songs. of it is is new songs for this effectively yeah. but songs in their own right I mean Sunflower with Post Malone and Sway Lee is like probably the standout for me yeah. but i just it's a fantastic so yeah the, the I, sequence with uh what's up danger when he's doing the leap of faith like that is all just like yeah exactly so I, me- I remember sunflower being the big one i listened to that loads after this came out mm. but i'm watching it again the other yeah, day yeah. i was like actually like this whole soundtrack yeah, is yeah. great a like, lot of it i remember i think at the time afterwards i tried listening through and not all of it really worked for me outside of the film but 
music tastes probably have changed yeah, in those but five I mean, years since. But yeah. yeah, I just think like in the context of the, the film, film it's yeah. like it's used perfectly. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's loads of other bits like sequences, like the bit in Alchemax, I think is fantastic where they have to sneak in and it leads to the Doc Ock thing and it's got the invisible cloaking thing. It's yeah. like loads of comedy I think there. on that, I think um, Miles having these new powers that, we don't usually see Spider-Man yeah, have it. Yeah. Obviously, Miles has those powers, but as you said, it hasn't ever really been shown on yeah. in field. Yeah. So seeing him having this, it's Spider-Man yeah. with an extra twist of the invisibility yeah. and the and electricity. The fact that none of the others can then kind of help him learn that almost because it's yeah. a new element. To and it. like, yeah, it's yeah. great. It's great fun. I think yeah. as well, like on powers, the when he first gets the powers and he's going through that whole day of yeah, it's it's so well done and it's yeah. so fun, particularly when he ends up in his in his room and he's reading the Spider-Man yeah, comic and it's the yeah, same yeah. and it's like and he's just turning it turning it and like they end up getting stuck to his hands the yeah. pages it's just and like yeah getting his hands stuck to like Gwen and stuff yeah, and then yeah. just like yeah, it, that's such barrel a... ball. and even like him like what everyone's talking everyone's, everyone's talking I can yeah. see their I can suddenly see their thought. his uh, his na- in, in a narration coming up as like comic things because yeah. he's become like a comic character yeah, yeah so it's many just nice really well done like that yeah in terms of like that, that moment with the with the sticking hair thing is very funny because you're kind of expecting like him to do the shoulder touch and her to react badly to it yeah. and she kind of reacts okay but then it's like the extra bit on the top um, in terms of sticking to stuff, the bit where he knocks out Peter B. Parker and then they're getting dragged around on the web yeah. is just like <laughs> it's, it's just it's just like solid physical comedy. It's just yeah. like one of the things I was reading was talking about, and I've seen a load of people talk about how like lots of films don't rely on physical comedy now because it's more expensive or it's it can be harder to kind of choreograph yeah. and write. Edgar Wright is someone who does it really well, and I think even in the same thing it was talking about like Jack, Jackie Chan films like we talked about Project yeah. A 1 and 2 and I think yeah this film is just like it's got funny dialogue but a lot of the laughs come from like gags or or people fucking flying around and yeah. stuff like that it's just, <laughs> yeah. it, which makes it stand out a lot from like you know I don't know Sausage Party that probably came out the same year where there are visual gags but a lot of it is like it's not very well thought out. And it's more just like dick jokes. Yeah, or like you read that someone is like German and they're wearing like an Nazi yeah. outfit or whatever and you're like, okay, cool, that's really <laughs> it's fucking funny, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think another visual thing that I hadn't really thought about before, but when I watched this, I thought it was really cool, is when you kind of get the dimension melding mm. and you've got, it's almost like, like Doctor Strange with yeah, like yeah. buildings just at all weird angles and like the, the at one yeah. point a train just flies through this particularly in that final climax mm. film there's things just flying around yeah, it's and it's cool. like this must have been so hard like to <laughs> put to paper if you know what I mean like just yeah. all these wacky things going on at once and crazy ideas <laughs> flying around yeah I like, think it, they that, pull it off really well that final sequence is kind of it always kind of catches me off well I say always like the two or three times <laughs> I've watched it it really catches me off guard because I kind of forget that quite a lot of that last bit is just in like a big kind of colourful nether space like yeah. you say like a weird <laughs> Doctor Strange thing yeah and there's shit just flying around all over the place yeah it's just yeah it's, it's very just, good, it's just and good the Kingpin stuff we mentioned him earlier I think I quite like his little mini backstory we get where yeah. he's kind of a bit pathetic in the end. Like he comes across as very like in control at the start and he kind of falls apart and gets emotional, which is kind of Kingpin's thing, isn't it? Like yeah. he always kind of sh- plays his hand. He shows his kind of that he cares too much about whatever it yeah. is. And- I, I kind of feel like he was almost the perfect mix of the Netflix Kingpin mm. and like the animated series Kingpin of yeah. like, he is this, Huge oversized like egomaniac, but also like he's a bit soft inside. Yes, like yeah. and it, it balances that like really well. And it's yeah. like, yeah, no, I really I really enjoyed this Kingpin. Like <laughs> Kingpin's one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Yeah. So like it's great to see him done. I well. like Kingpin, yeah. I really like Kingpin. Yeah, I yeah, I don't have too much else to say, really. No, um uh, one other thing we've got down I love the line when Peter Porker's going back to his thing he goes that's all folks and they're like is that legal we love to do that <laughs> like yeah I, actually that was the thing the, things like that mm. and I think uh, with like the Spider-Man comic and stuff like that is this film is super self-aware yes it knows yeah, exactly yeah. what it is it knows whose its audience is and it knows yeah. like what it can do without like crossing a line yeah and it's nice kind of balance of uh, people who are like super familiar with the source material and people who have maybe seen 
one of the films it's referenced at the start. Kind of yeah, thing. exactly. It's got stuff for everybody, which is really nice because I don't know. I feel like a lot of like mainline MCU stuff, it kind of the, the references and stuff are only really there like for people to look up afterwards and see on things. Or, yeah. Or maybe like if you're a big comics fan, you might notice something. They don't really play for every, like whereas like you say like that's all folks is something that pretty much anyone would understand yeah i guess it's referencing outside of the source material which is kind yeah. of rare for these things but but yeah in terms of um well actually there's a couple of things you know in miles's universe there's loads of like weird little differences did you see any things about that when you were looking it up no so because his universe is an our universe which is what was making me think about like the ultimate universe and stuff so one of the things apparently Chance the Rapper is on a poster and he has a number four in his hat, whereas his hat normally has a number three. Right. <laughs> um, the test has like December or something on it. So right. I don't know if that, I, I thought that was, Ma- uh, Miles was intentionally writing the wrong date because he did. Yeah, I, think that's what I, I think that's probably what that is. But there's other things like there's an EA water polo game on like Times Square, which is not <laughs> okay. a game that exists. And also um, from Dusk Till Sean, which was the proposed Sean of the yeah. Dead sequel, there's a big poster when one of them arrives. So there's little hints that it's not our universe. Oh, that's fun. And I think the police say like PDMY instead of NYPD. Yeah, I picked up that. A couple of fun little bits like that. I'm sure there's whole lists and lists out there of things. But, yeah. But yeah, in terms of bad things, I really don't have too much. I think the villains, although I really like them, I think there's there's definitely room for more development there. Yeah. I understand why it's not their film and they're just kind of backdrop for everything. I think the Kingpin thing, I like it, but I think having him kind of have a flashback and realize why he's doing it is not the cleanest way of doing that. Yeah. I, I like we've said fair. before, like I make these criticisms. I'm not a script writer, <laughs> so I don't have anything to propose, but like I'm, when I was watching it back and like, it kind of gets to halfway through the film and you're like, well, why does Kingpin want to do this? And then they have a handy scene where he just like, <laughs> he's thinking about why he wants to do it. And I'm like, okay, it works, but it's yeah. like, you know, if, I, if I'm being super critical because I have nothing else to write down, it's like, well, maybe they could have <laughs> no, done that better. Fair enough. I've just, I've just got nothing. No, I was I mean, like, it is it's just great. It is a very good film. Um, I was yeah. going to ask you before we go into trivia, mm. um, obviously there's, there's nine Spider-Man films. Right, where does okay. this rank for you? I mean, it's up there. I don't know yeah. if it's... Uh, I mean, I I like Miles Morales as a character. I'm not like... He's not my Spider-Man. Like, I, yeah. you know, I, he's not going to be that many people. I mean, it's probably a whole load of people that he's, he's a good <laughs> representation for. But, like, you know, I, I think a, a younger Peter Parker film is probably something that I kind of think more of as Spider-Man. So I probably... I don't know, like... I mean, I think Spider Man Two is really good, but I think it's quite sad. <laughs> like on like, when you watch it back, you're kind of like, Ugh. I don't know. I, I find it very difficult. I don't think any of the Maguire films would be up there for me. They're they're both pretty good, but they're not like <laughs> both. <laughs> they're I think they're both alright. Yeah, like, ignore, ignoring the third one then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, oh, sorry, uh, Garfield. Oh, sorry. okay. <laughs> <Garfield>. <laughs> I think Spider Man One and Two are up there for me. And probably Homecoming. I don't even know about the last one, the the most recent yeah, I, Three I, I, Spiders. I know you I, didn't really like it going back to it. I don't think I've rewatched it. No Way it. Home is still really hard to judge because yeah. it's 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 recent. I would say it's in top five anyway. That's yes, my, yeah, I yeah. think like of, of the Maguire trilogy, I think the first mm. one's pretty good. I think the second one's good, but I do think it's a bit overrated, particularly by like comic fans. Yeah, I, just, I still think it's good, but what yeah. people, a lot of people often describe it as like the best comic book film. I don't think it's that good. No, Spider-Man no. 3, I fucking hate. The yeah. two Garfield ones are both okay. There's some really good stuff and yeah. some bad stuff. I thought Homecoming was really good yeah. and Far From Home was really good. Yeah, I went about the, the really weird order. Didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, and as I said, No Way Home's hard to kind of judge. So th- this could easily be number one for me. I yeah. Think. Uh, yeah, I would say it's in the top half of I think, the top five. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> so it's in the top two and a half. Though. I think if I had to be put on the spot, I'd probably choose this or Homecoming as my favourite Spider-Man film. Yeah, I think, yeah, the thing the thing that I kind of takes me away from putting, um, I've forgotten all their names, that's why I didn't do it, uh, Far From Home and No Way Home, the reason why I wouldn't have put them immediately up top is because 
they stray too far from what makes a Spider-Man film like a classic Spider-Man film. I, I, think, I can see why they do it because it's like you say, it's like yeah, eight films in or whatever. I think with those two films, I think I, I really like both those films, but I think they're both so fundamentally part of the MCU, mm. whereas the other seven films, even Homecoming, yeah, yeah. even though it's got Tony Stark in it, yeah. it's still pretty self-contained and obviously mm. the others are their own universe it's yeah. like i mean those two it's it's just another mcu film rather than another yeah. spider-man film yeah and i hate the suit from the first garfield film so i can't i can't, <laughs> I can't put that up it just looks like a fucking blue and red basketball it's just, <laughs> oh, i hate it so much that's <laughs> amazing spider-man 2 suit is Great. I know the eyes are probably a bit big now in hindsight, but yeah. But other than that, it's like, and they get the they get the air rippling the suit. They had all the, yeah. the suit. The, none it's, of it's really none weird. of the Tom Holland suits look like real suits almost any of the time, and it yeah. really annoys. And the lines are too too faint. But uh, it's it's weird how like Amazing <laughs> Spider Man two. I, I probably agree. It's probably the best suit. I don't know if you'd rank it above the Maguire ones, but for me, it's the best suit. Amazing too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't... But it's amazing yeah. that that's the same film that had the worst depiction visually of the Green Goblin as well. Because, <laughs> like, he just yeah. looks... I mean, out of out of the ones we've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he just looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I, so, yeah. so, some really good visual decisions in that and some really bad ones. But well, I think we're going yeah, yeah. a bit uh, off here. Yeah, Forget right. the film yeah. we're actually talking Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll make sure that's in the description if people want to know what our <laughs> Spider-Man rankings are. Yeah, I thought, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question to have. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of bits of trivia for you. Uh, the first one is, if you hit pause at any time that a train goes by, right. any time, um, you will see Stan Lee because oh. all the animators wanted to to do a version of Stanley <laughs> animated. Obviously, he's got that one scene. Yeah. This film came just after he died. Yes, he's got, that's right. He's got the one big scene, yeah, but yeah. all the different animators wanted to do Stanley. So he's in every and train he's that also, goes by. Also, you know when they fall onto the zebra crossing, and he's like, "Oh, walk around us," and everyone just like walks over. Yeah, them. What, the guy who walks right over them is, is Stanley as well. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then the other one I've got is uh, before the radioactive spider bites miles. Uh, it crawls over the spray cans and changes colour to match each can. Uh, um, this is the power later on to pass to Miles. It also suggests that Miles doesn't actually become invisible. He just changes colour to match his surroundings. Right. Which would make sense because that's a, a thing animals can do. So it's more realistic yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously yeah. It's, it's always been I'm just thinking, do I don't invisible. know how that works with the Prowler thing because he switches visions to see him. It's like heat vision. He switches the heat. But what so, vision was he on before? Just normal night vision, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I, I think I don't know I don't know where I fall on that, I think but it it's is, believable enough. I think it is more of a cloaking than like a Sue Storm yeah. thing. But yeah. even that you can kind of see his outline and stuff when they show yeah. it. There's a couple of times where he kind of pops out for kind of comic effects. Yeah. But and also that that's one of the scenes where it subverts the expectation because we're kind of dreading this spider bite because it's always like yeah, really and dramatic. It, it drags it out and even quite when it goes bit. and it goes it's like the three yeah. hits of it and he just goes and just knocks it off. And it's like <laughs> it's like this film knows what we're expecting and it does a really good job of kind of catering to that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the the last thing to ask is whether or not this made you more or less hyped for uh Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, Project or Project No. Project, I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah it's a project. <laughs> I mean, this is like not, uh, it's not the same in the order we're releasing them, but like the last three one of these recorded, it's just been like, all good. This yeah. film's great. <laughs> Move yeah. on. I mean, I'm, I am very excited for the new one. I, I haven't watched any trailers, I don't think. I no, might have seen like I. a little clip on TV and kind of or YouTube and changed. I don't know there. anything about it apart from the fact it's called Across the Spider Verse. I think I, I would probably know a little bit more than you. I've seen probably a couple of screenshots. I know. So the end of this film. Did you see the post credits? This post credits. This uh, yes. Which is uh, Miguel O'Hara Spider Man twenty ninety nine. 
Yes. I think yeah. I think he's, he's got the Spider Man point yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Thing. I think I think he he plays into it a bit more, right. which kind of makes sense. Um but yeah, I don't know. I think there's they've revealed a hell of a lot of the kind of characters and stuff, which is I do remember they did that with this one. They revealed all those main characters. Right. I think I knew a couple of them going in, and I was like, Oh, it really ruins it, but it didn't. So <laughs> yeah. hopefully me kind of seeing a couple of character posts and stuff won't yeah. spoil it too much. I've but, done well to not see anything. Yeah. So. Well at the time of recording it's it's like just over a week isn't it yeah, so, so. Uh, very much looking forward to it cool cool excellent so hopefully you enjoyed that thank you for joining us yeah so if you want more stuff like this as well check out the project project on all podcast providers it'll be on the same feed as this or the same channel whatever you're listening to and we'll be back next week for uh across the spider-verse yeah all right bye bye